Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now we look at the the fifth problem of the tutorial 5. So, here we are given few channels of the EEG signal and we have to use the Welch procedure that is how to compute the average PSD. Okay. So, we have to study the change in the PSD with respect to that when we change that window width, number of segments averaged and the type of window used. Okay? These three variables and we have to compare the PSDs computed with respect to the, the PSD computed with the entire signal. That means, without averaging if we take the entire signal and compute the PSD, what are the changes we get with different window width different number of segments and type of window okay and we have to discuss about the result at the end <coughs> so so that is the the task given to ask so to start that first we have to download the the signals that four eg signals are given eg1 c3 c4 F3 and F4, okay. Four EG channels are given, and they are given here in this location. And the corresponding MATLAB file to read and the plot them is given here. So we need to keep them in the same directory. That is the working directory of the MATLAB. So now, first we read those four signals. So, what we do that we load first that F3 signal, name it as EGF3 and sampling frequency is 100 hertz. So, we first look at that what is the length and we set the time axis, we plot that. So, to plot all the signals we divide the that plot area into four parts with the subplot command. Okay. So, first we plot the that F 3, then we read F 4 and we plot F 4 in the second location or second row we can say, then in the third row we are plotting the, the signal C 3. Okay. Here we are plotting that and in the fourth row we are plotting the that signal C 4. Okay. Here we have done that. So, let us see that how the these four EG signals they look like. Here are the signals given one below the other starting with F 3, then F 4, then C 3 and C 4. All the signals they seems to be bit correlated they have similarity with each other. So, now we have to go for that computation of the PSD. So, we compute the PSD of each one of them at a time first for the whole signal and we display them and then we go for actually the step of the averaged periodogram. So, for that we have to calculate the PSD first of the that complete signal 
ok. For the complete signal we calculate the PSD of a channel and we do it for all the channel. Then we calculate the average PSD by dividing the signal into finite segments and compute the average of PSD of the individual segments. Okay. And here we have taken this segment they are non overlapping okay. and for that that for the average PSD we use the rectangular window and study the effect of varying the duration of the window which will automatically come that um, if we change the number of actually segments ok because total signal length is fixed. If we reduce the window size we have more segments ok and we repeat the same thing with Hamming window ok and in that case also by varying the window duration what is the impact we would note. So, let us proceed first we are showing the the PSD of the EEG channel that EEG signal of channel F 3. Okay. We get that D C has a peak then there is some peak near I think around 9 or 10 around 10 actually there is another peak go for the second signal F 4 again the same nature is there the maximum energy is there at the DC and there are peak around 10. Then go for the channel C 3 that we get that around 10 the peaks are even more pronounced and now go for that that C 3 and then C 4 we get same nature that C 4 has that spectrum though signals uh, strength is there around 10 uh, that it is less than that C 3 here was a C 3 and here is the C 4. Okay. Now, all this spectrum they are for the entire signal and we get each of this case that there is high variation in the the PSD or PSD we can say they are um, having a lot of fluctuations. So, now we go for different segments. So, starting with three segments. So, how do we do that? We divide the signal by three parts we are taking length of 750 total is 750 is the length. So, length of each of the three segment would be 250 each. Okay. So, we calculate the F F T and take the average. Okay. So, with that we can get the output let us see that what we get. Okay. Now, for the Hamming window it would be almost same the only difference would be that previous case we are previous case we are taking the that that part of the signal directly. Okay. Here here is the difference that for the rectangular window we are showing that that directly we are taking the part of the signal and we are computing the PSD compared to that when we are going for Hamming window we are computing the Hamming window and multiplying the the signal with the Hamming window okay, for that many samples and then rest of the thing would be same. Okay. Now, here is the output we get for the three segment we get the variation has been 
bit reduced compared to the entire signal with 3 segment and here we are taking the rectangular window. Next we go for that Hamming window. Okay. In case of Hamming window we see it is little more smooth, but then again that the peaks are become becoming little more wide. Next we go for 5 segment for the rectangular window. We see it is smoother than the, the 3 segment 1 okay. and now go for the Hamming window with 5 segments. Okay. So, here we get that the side peaks they are getting merged in the Hamming window. If we have gone for the, the previous one you see that compared to that rectangular window the Hamming window is giving actually smoother one, but again the at the cost of that frequency resolution. Next we go for the that rectangular window with 10 segments we see that the side lobes what we are showing here they are getting merged okay. and we get the same nature for the Hamming window also, but the signal PSD looks much more smooth. So, this is all these things we see for the F 3. Now, we go for the that the other channels we go for that the signal F 4. Okay. Before that we would like to see them side by side before changing the another channel we would like to see them side by side and in the left hand side we are getting that the results for rectangular window right hand side we get that for the Hamming window. So, if we look at the compare that left and right we get Hamming window always is giving smoother PSD and at the same time we can say that rectangular window is giving more sharp peaks and if we now go from top to bottom in any of them that for the rectangular window or Hamming window we see as we increase the number of segments from 3 to 5, 5 to 10 we get more and more smooth PSD. But along with that what we see that smaller peaks they are getting merged. So, that is the that downside of it. So, that is the we can say the overall assessment we get for the that F 3 channel. Next we go for F 4 start with the the signal of the the 3 segments with rectangular window and then we look for the that average of the 3 segments that of the first the rectangular window then Hamming window then look at the average of the that 5 segments of the rectangular window we see it has become more smooth than the 3 segment version and when you go for rectangular window to our Hamming window then we get it becomes even more smooth. When you go for 10 segment we get the rectangular window it is more smooth compared to the 3 and the 5 segment cases when we change from rectangular window with 10 segments to Hamming window with 10 segments we get even more smooth BSD. So, now we put them together to compare and like the channel F 3 we see the F 4 also gives us the same 
kind of conclusion that Hamming window gives smoother PSD and irrespective of the window if we increase the number of segments we get more and more smooth PSD, but we may lose actually peaks in that way because they are getting merged as the frequency resolution is becoming more and more poor as we are taking more segments to average. Now, we go for channel 3. First, we look at the result of 3 segments, then we get the result of Hamming window 3 segments, then for 5 segments for rectangular window and 5 segments for the Hamming window. Then we go for 10 segments of the rectangular window followed by 10 segments of the Hamming window. Now, we put all of them together and we see in the left hand side the rectangular window is used right hand side the Hamming window using Hamming window we get more smooth PSD and for that our that Hamming window not only we get it smooth the smoothness also increases with number of segments, but at the cost of that frequency resolution or in other word what we can say the smaller peaks they are getting much to give a bigger peak as we increase the number of segments or reducing the dimension of the or the duration of the window. Now, we go for the channel 4 we start with first the 3 segments with rectangular window we get lots of undulations, but it is undulations are less compared to that the PSD when we take the entire signal. Now, we change the window from rectangular to that Hamming window and we see that we get a little more smooth that PSD. Next, we increase the number of segments for the rectangular window we get it is more smooth for the Hamming window it is even more smooth for 10 segments for the rectangular window we get the best or smooth actually the PSD compared to the th 3 segment and 5 segment cases and for the Hamming window with 10 segments we get it is even more smooth. So, we put all of them together to get a perspective that how they are changing we get the sharpest peak we are getting uh, or sharp sharper peaks we are getting for the rectangular window and among these examples for the 3 segment average for the rectangular window is giving the sharpest peak and more undulations. As we change from the Hamming window in each of these case we get less actually undulation or smoother spectra and if we go for more number of segment that is smaller duration of the signal and more averaging then we have the that decrease in the frequency resolution at the same time we have smoother PSD. So, that is these are the results we get now we summarize the results first we look at the PSD obtained from the single channel channel of EG it has very high variance or the undulations are very high we can say. Next what we get that if we use that average PSD it helps to actually smooth out the the PSD compared to the the PSD of the complete signal. Okay. And next observation what we get as we increase the number of segments that is 
number of segment used for averaging we get more smooth actually PhD, but this smoothness comes at the cost as the number of segments are increasing and thereby the size of the window is decreasing the frequency resolution is decreased and what we get we get the spectrum which is more smeared that means that if we have two frequencies they are very close to each other if we are having more and more segments and thereby the window size is keeps on decreasing these two peaks can get merged. Now, we have let us look at few more observations that when we look at the PSD in each of these case we see that apart from the peak at the DC we have peaks in between that 9 to 10 hertz that clearly indicates that the presence of alpha rhythm. Okay. So, each of this case alpha rhythm is the, the prominent actually the signal that what we get. Now, we look at that what is the window use and what is the impact on that. For the rectangular window we have smaller main lobe and because of that we are getting sharper peaks and compared to that the Hamming window which has lower side lobes compared to the rectangular window it is giving more smoothing. So, with this we conclude the, the fifth experiment of the tutorial 5. Thank you.